Okay, in Explore Activity 2, what we want to look into is what are called properties of integer, integer exponents. Okay, so what are some ways that we could um, change these expressions around? Because that's what we like to do in algebra a lot, is we like to change expressions to make them simpler to solve. And so we're just going to, this is like a little workout to help us to just understand um, exponential expressions in a little bit more deeply. Okay, so let's look um, at part A here. And you could probably work through part A by yourself and all the way down to answering this question. What pattern do you see when multiplying two powers with the same base. So what we're going to be doing is breaking this expression up in different ways, these three different um, ways. So why don't you look at that real quickly and then I will quickly go over um, what I see in those patterns. Okay, so hopefully you have your paper filled in here and we'll just um, go over this really quickly. So in the first line, we have three used as a factor five times. So that would be three to the fifth power. That's just the definition of, of the expo exponential expression there. So we have three is the base, five is the exponent, three to the fifth is the power. All right, in the next line, we still have three used as a factor five times, but it's broken up. So we've got We've got it used it four times first, and then we're going to multiply it by three again to get our fifth three. So we're breaking that up. Three to the fourth times three to the first power is another way of writing three to the fifth power. Okay, and in the third line, we've broken it up into three threes multiplied by two threes. It's the exact same three to the fifth, but it's three to three to the third power times three squared gives us that same value of three to the fifth. So what pattern are you seeing while you're multiplying two powers? Well, hopefully you saw this. Um, the base stays the same because we've got a base of three in all of these expressions. The exponent becomes the sum of the exponents in the powers. So another way of saying that is here, four plus one is equal to five. Three plus two is another way of breaking up that five. Okay, so we've got, if we've got these two powers where the bases are the same, we can just add the exponents to make a simpler expression here or an equivalent expression. So, um, so go ahead and maybe you've already used the pattern to complete this equation. Five squared times five to the fifth could be rewritten or is equivalent to five to what power? Yeah, that would be five to the seventh power. All right, so um, again, this is going to be most useful if you're doing this on your own first and then using the video just to correct your, um, correct your work. So let's go on to part B of this activity. So we're going to look at a different situation there. So in part B, um, we have, we have an, uh, an equation here. All right, so what do we have? We have two powers of four, four to the fifth, and we're dividing, so this is 4 to the 5th divided by 4 to the 3rd. So it's different. In, the, in part A, we were multiplying. So now we're dividing, okay? So this example shows this worked out. So what does that look like if we, if we you know, write it all out? Well, we've got 4 used as a factor 5 times in the numerator, 4 used as a factor 3 times in the denominator. So we can find, um, you know cancel, or we can find these factors of 1, right? 4 divided by 4 is 1, and we can do that three times. So what are we left with? In the, we're left with really just 4 times 4 here. So that would be 4 to what power? What power is that? Well, um, hopefully you're filling it in right now. That would just be 4 squared, right? So we've completed this equation. We've got 4 to the 5th divided by 4 to the 3rd is equal to 4 squared. Well, what's happening with those, um, those powers, you know, those factors of 4 in the numerator and the denominator? Um, 
what pattern are we going to see when we divide two powers, okay? So what we're trying to do in this activity is not just memorize rules. We're trying to just develop an understanding for why the rules exist. But we will still have a list of rules when we're all done. Okay, so pause the video and write, what pattern do you see when dividing two powers with the same base? Okay, so you've written your pattern, and I'm just going to show you how I've written it. Um, the base is the same, you know, from this expression on the, on the left going to this expression on the right. The base is the same. It's 4. The exponent is the difference between the exponent in the numerator and the one in the denominator. So 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. All right, and the reason we're dividing, I mean, the reason we're subtracting is because these, um, these three are canceling out. Three of the fours in the denominator um, become, you know, kind of factors of one with these three fours in the, in the denominator, the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so we subtract. So how could you use your pattern to complete the equation six to the eighth divided by six cubed? What would that be? Well, I like to write it first. It's 6 to the power of 8 minus 3, all right? Or, more simply written, 6 to the fifth, okay? So three of those factors of 6 are going to cancel with three of the factors of 6 in the uh, numerator and denominator, become factors of 1 there. Okay, so that's part B. So there we divided powers. So in part A, we multiplied powers. In part B, we saw a pattern for dividing powers. And in part C, we're going to do something even different, okay? So in part C, what we have is a power, 5 to the third, and these parentheses say that that 5 to the third is being raised to the power of 2. So we've got 5 to the third, a power raised to another power. So go ahead and fill in what you see happening here in these blanks, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so um, we've got 5 times 5 times 5, and that's my 5 to the cube. So all that's happening here is I'm just rewriting what's in the parentheses. So that would be to the power of 2. So this is 5 times 5 times 5 squared. So that equals 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Um, so how many times do I have 5 used as a factor in this expression? Well, it's 5 to the 6th now. All right, so what pattern do we see when we're raising a power to a power? Well, we can see that... The base stays the same. We've got a base of 5. So the base is the original base. The exponent is the product of the exponent. So in order to get this 6 over here, I had to take 3 times 2. And you can see why that makes sense, because I used 5 as a factor 3 times, and I did that twice. So that's 2 times 3 gives me 6. And so now you want to use that pattern to complete this equation, what would 7 squared to the fourth power be? Okay, so 7 squared to the fourth power would look like this. If I wrote it out, I'd have 7 squared times 7 squared times 7 squared times 7 squared. So how many factors of 7 do we have there? Well, we've got 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is the same as 4 times 2 or 8. So 7 squared to the 4th power would be 7 to the 2 times 4, or 7 to the 8th. Okay, now I want to um, kind of address the question that's in this math talk bubble right here. So in the math talk bubble it says, do the patterns you found in parts A through D, and I think they mean A through C, um, apply if the exponents are negative, and if so, give an example of each. So let's go back to um, part A. Let's 
go back to part A right here. So in part A, um, we had this situation where we could say 3 to the third times 3 squared is equal to 3 to the fifth, and we could just add the exponents. So let's look at an example of that if the exponents were negative. Um, here we go. And right here. Okay, so if the exponents are negative, what if we had something like um, 3 to the negative 2 times, notice I'm using dot for times, get used to that, 3 to the negative 3 is equal to, um, now by our rule, that should be negative 2, the exponent should be negative 2 plus negative 3, so this should be 3 to the negative so what we want to do is check that and show that that could be true just using what we know about positive exponents. So 3 to the negative 2, if I rewrite it, that's 1 over 3 squared, right? a to the negative n is 1 over a to the negative n is 1 over a to the positive n, okay? So we have 1 over 3 squared ah, times 1 over... 3 to the positive 3. Now I'm going to multiply those together, right? So when I multiply fractions in the numerator, I'm going to have 1 times 1, which is just 1. And in the denominator, I'm going to have 3 squared times 3 to the third. So I know that that is 3 to the fifth, okay? So by using positive exponent rules, I can see that, that this is 1 over 3 to the 5th, but now do you see that I could take this 1 over 3 to the 5th, and I can rewrite that with a negative exponent, 3 to the negative 5. So what I've shown is that, that yes, this works for negative exponents. I can just add them to get um, the exponent of the product of those, okay? Um, you would need to give an example for part B, which was um, dividing powers. Does it work for dividing powers? It does. Um, does it work for power to a power? It also does. So see if you can find examples of that. Um, I'm not going to go through that in this video, but you can do that on your own. Okay, now we've got one more section. To complete and that's part D and in part D we have um, something that's a little different notice what we have raised to a power so we have a product 3 times 4 you know there's two factors there the parentheses around them mean that 3 times 4 is our base and that base is being raised to the second power or being squared so we have 3 times 4 the quantity 3 times 4 squared um, so, if we write that out, really what we have is 3 times 4 times 3 times 4. We use 3 times 4 as a factor twice. And so, once we do that, we have all these, we have these numbers, they're all being multiplied together. So, we can use the associative property and the commutative property. We can move things around. So, what I want to do now is I want to group those two factors of 3 so I've got a factor of 3 here and a factor of 3 here. I want to put them together. And then I've got the two factors of 4, and I want to put those together. So now I've grouped the bases of 3, or the factors of 3, grouped the factors of 4, and I can rewrite this expression. Okay, so what goes in the boxes? So go ahead and pause or just write it now into the boxes. What do we have? Well, we have 3 used as a factor twice, so that's 3 squared. We have 4 used as a factor twice, so that's 4 squared. So what pattern could you kind of see in going f straight from 3 times 4 squared over here to that being the same as 3 squared times 4 squared? So really what I did here is I was able to get rid of these parentheses and write these as separate expressions or separate powers. Okay, so um, what would that, how could you describe that pattern? So go ahead and pause and write in your own words what pattern you're seeing here. Okay, so here here is um, one way you could think of that. 
and I didn't really have room to write it, so I'm just going to say it. So what we're seeing here is when we have a product, um, when we have a product raised to a power, it can be thought of as each of the factors raised to the same power and multiplied together. So the power of a product is the product of the powers, if you get what I'm saying. So I have the powers separately, um, and they're multiplied together. So however you can say that, and the answer is in the teacher guide. You can read theirs if you'd like. Um, so we can raise those factors to a power individually. So how could we apply that pattern to complete this equation? 5 times 6 to the third power. I'm go ahead and do that. Okay, so we can see that that's equal to 5 to the third power times 6 to the third power. And I want to point something out here. We don't even really need to use the dot in here. We don't. We can put um, two expressions if we put them next to each other. That is another way of of expressing multiplication. So we know that this is five to the third times six to the third. And written. Let me just write it out here. Five to the third, six to the third is the same thing as saying five to the third times six to the third. All right. Okay, so what we want to do now is kind of generalize this. So in this last part, we're going to write a general rule for a to the m times m to a to the n. Okay, so notice we have the same base here. So this is like what we did in part a. We have some base raised to an exponent multiplied by the same base raised to an exponent. So how could we simplify that expression? Um, so I want you to go through each of these um, corresponds to these different situations. So in this um, second one here, we've got two powers of the same base that are being divided. We've got a to the m divided by a to the n. And we want a general rule for when we have a power, a to the m, raised to another power, n. And then in the last one is what we did in part D. We have a product, A times B, raised to a power. So how could we rewrite each of those? So go ahead and do that, and when you're done, come back, and you can check your work against what I have. Okay, so let's look at number three first. Um, when we have a product of powers, a to the m times a to the n, we can just simply add the exponents. And remember, in all of these, m and m can be integers. Even though we used positive values when we did the examples, negative values work too, as we saw in that math talk bubble. So the negative values work for all of these. All right, let's look at the next one. So when we're dividing powers, we subtract the exponents. We have m minus n. And when we take a power to a power, like in number number five, we multiply the exponents. Okay. And when we have a product raised to a power, we can separate out those factors and raise each of them to that same exponent individually. So we'd have a to the n times b to the n. And this is real useful, especially when you have an unknown in these parentheses. We want to we want to separate it out so we can do that. So it'd be a to the n times b to the n. Okay, so that is explore activity two. So you're done for the day. Um, so the rest of this lesson is going to be using these properties to simplify expressions that have powers in them. All right. Good job.